So he decided to pick up a Galaxy S21 or even a Galaxy S21 Ultra, or let's say the S21 Plus. What should you do out of the box to get the best experience? Sabah everybody, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to focus on the first 10 things you need to do to get the most out of your Samsung Galaxy S21 line of devices. Let's check it out. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. So what I have in front of us is, of course, the brand new Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra as well as the S21. Now, the reason I don't have the S21 Plus is because for the most part, the S21 Plus shares a lot of its benefits or the features that we're going to cover today with the S21. And of course, the Ultra has a very unique feature uh, that enables it to actually use an S Pen. But that will be at the end of the video and we'll talk about that a little bit more and more of the bonus around. But let's go ahead and start off by talking about what are the first 10 things we need to do to our device to get it running right. So first thing we'll obviously need to do, you know, take them out of the box, log in with your account, and uh, everything is basically pretty much set up for me on these devices, but I'm gonna walk you through what is the first thing you should do. Now, to transition your data onto your device, the first thing you probably wanna do is run the application called the Smart Switch. Now, Smart Switch is a very fast and very simple application that Samsung has put in. Now, I've set it up already on this account, but I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through it here. And it's a very simple application. The main benefit of it is essentially to transfer your content, meaning applications from your old Android device to a new one, or even if you want to connect it to, and let's say coming from an iPhone, you're going to be able to use this application very simply. It's preloaded on your Samsung S21 line of devices. Actually, it's been preloaded for some time. Launch the application, make sure if it needs an update, run the application update. And if you're running from, an, let's say, one S21 to an S20 or something to that effect, it's very simple. So basically, this device will be the receiving end, and it'll ask you basically if you want to come from an iPhone, a Windows phone, and of course, or a Galaxy Android phone. And what I really like about it is that it gives us a report at the end of what is the data that it transferred. As you can see, I did about 50 gigabytes of transfer data between the apps, videos, images, and of course, it transfers your text messages, it also call logs. So it's not just transferring basic information, it's seriously almost cloning and it works best with a Samsung device to a Samsung device. And that's the main benefit of Smart Switch. Now, there are different things that you can also do with this. You can do it wirelessly or you can do it via wire. Uh, wire will work the fastest as that uses the fastest options here with the USB-C connections at the bottom. But overall, that's going to be the first thing I would recommend. Transfer your data from your old phone to the new one and that gets you running at least from the data point. Next, we're going to talk about the power button here that we have. If we press and hold the power button on the S21 out of the box, it launches Bixby. Now, if this is something that you're normally used to, you like using Bixby and you don't necessarily want to see the power menu, then that's normally and that's fine. The only other way to shut down your phone or go into the power menu, you have to bring back down the notification panel, go all the way up to that button there, and that's how we get the power menu. That's part of One UI. But you'll notice there's an option here at the bottom where it says side key settings. This enables us to actually remap that function to either open up Bixby or basically the up. This is the double press function. I can say open Bixby or open an app. You can customize which one. Here is where the wake Bixby or open uh, menu, and I did, that's what I'd like to do. Now, I'm not gonna change it here because I've already done it here, and this is mostly for the example. Once you do that, that becomes the function and the option of having this service, which essentially is launching Bixby, goes away. Very simple, very easy, and again, you have the option of going either way. Once we have the power menu set up correctly, I do wanna talk about the fingerprint sensor this year. It's actually a lot bigger and a lot faster. Uh, let's go ahead and do it real quick here. It's actually very, very fast. Like it's crazy fast, so much faster than what we had last year. And one of the things I would probably say is the easiest thing to do is just to set up your fingerprint sensor and your biometrics. Lock it and make sure you secure your device. It's very simple. You go into the settings tab, go into the biometrics and security section, set up your face unlock and your fingerprints. And I recommend adding more than one fingerprint on it. So that's one thing to keep in mind. It helps because if you're using it, let's say with your right hand, you open up and you unlock, you have it there. But let's say I switch over to the left hand. I wanna unlock with this one. Make sure you register uh, whatever form factor that you feel like you're always going to be using. If you're uh, more comfortable using the device in one hand and you're never gonna use the other one, then obviously that's gonna be an easy one. Uh, but setting it up is pretty simple and then using it is exactly the best option. So you can turn it on, unlock, and of course put it back in here and then we're gonna unlock. And it just unlocks very nicely and very quickly. So that's one of the main benefits here. Now here is where we start getting a little bit different of an experience depending on the device you pick up. If you get the S21 or S21 Plus, you're gonna be getting the same experience as we're looking at it here. We're gonna go into settings, we're gonna go into display. Uh, the organization of, the mess uh, of everything here is pretty much in the same order. Dark mode is present there, you can turn it on. Uh, brightness level, all of the other options you have in here. But one thing you'll notice first and foremost is you have adaptive smoothness or motion smoothness. Now, this is essentially the refresh rate that they're using here. 
The experience on the S21 and S21 Plus is going to be basically a adaptive refresh rate from 40 hertz up to 120 hertz, and that's where you get the adaptive. If you go standard, even on both of these, you're going to be stuck to basically 60 frames per second across the board. Now, not that it's a bad experience, but if you're looking to save some battery, obviously standard will be the best. Adaptive is very nice, and it works really nice to help us protect the battery life that we have on our devices. Now. One thing that we can't do on the S21 and S21 Plus is the ability of changing the resolution of the screen because it is a 1080p panel. So you'll notice right here, there's eye comfort screen mode is vivid, but here I don't have the option, uh, but actually one of the other things that we have in here is the ability of changing the screen resolution. So out of the box, when you first pick up your S21 Ultra, it's actually gonna be set up to full HD, very similar to the experience that you get here. Now, obviously they're doing that because they wanna save battery, they wanna give you the best experience, you know, high refresh rate with a basically a 1080p resolution. Uh, you are able to switch it to Q8, WQHD, which is the 1440p, that's basically a 2K resolution. It will consume more battery, but that will be the best experience option here. So for the S21, S21 Plus, it'll be 1080p, 120 hertz or 60. For the uh, S21 Ultra, you're gonna get basically 1080p, 120, 60, and of course 2K or WQHD Plus. Uh, 1080, uh, basically uh, 60 and 120. So the adaptive option here is available on any resolution you use on your S21 Ultra. For me, I'm going with the best experience, WQHD and 120 Hertz or the adaptive refresh rate that we get there. And of course, this would be the area as well where you're able to change your navigation buttons. So I left this one as a stock experience. This is how it comes out of the box. And you, of course, you are able to turn on the uh, standard navigation gestures. Now, the good thing about this is the navigation gestures are compatible with third party launchers. So if you decide to use a second party or let's say a Nova Prime or anything else, you're able to basically get the same experience with the gestures. I'm still using the stock One UI 3.1 experience here. But again, if you choose to use Nova or anything like that, it's going to work the exact same way, either with buttons or gestures. Now, the next thing we're going to jump into here is launcher settings, which of course give us the ability of getting a better experience out of our device. Now, out of the box, you always automatically have an option here on the left, which is something that is very new to the, uh, UI, One UI 3.1. You notice here on the left side, I have that activated as well. You can deactivate it by means of just doing this. That means every time I swipe to the left, nothing happens. But if I activate it, I also have the ability of going between two options. Either I go with the Samsung Free, which is their TV service that they're trying to promote, and of course, or use just the standard Google feed, which is what I normally have on most of my other Android devices. So if you're used to it, you can go. And if you're not, you can also switch over here. And of course, once you go home, you'll notice it'll actually go ahead and launch the application and try to basically set it up for you. So the overall experience is very customizable when it comes down to the feed. You can pick what you want or you can just disable whatever you don't want. For me, I'm going to go ahead and leave the Google feed because that's the one perfect option that I like. We have the ability of customizing wallpapers, themes, widgets, and in the settings. Now we'll talk a little bit more about the wallpapers that you guys saw at the beginning with the Dragon Ball and I'll explain to you guys how we did those. Uh, we can customize the home screen, the home grid, uh, as well as the app grid. So those are things we can customize. The one thing I do want to mention to you guys is the ability of changing swipe time to open notification. You have the ability of turning that on or off. And if you turn it off, what ends up happening is when you swipe down, it turns into the automatic app drawer. So essentially it's a loop process of going between app drawer to app drawer. Uh, personally, I think with large displays like these, we should have this notification option to be able to open up our notification panel because that's going to be at the end of the day, the best benefit here. Opening it up and accessing our notification panel will be the best way. So that's one of the main options that you can do. Pressing and holding here on the background gives you access to the settings and we can jump back in there. And again, you can customize the different options in there, height apps, all of the things that you normally were able to do before are pretty much still present there. Uh, but again, all of this is very simple and customizable to your preference. The next setting that I recommend you guys taking a look at is your default application. And this is under apps. You go directly in there and then you'll notice there's a few settings that you're able to customize. I'm not saying that you need to, but this is something that you need to be aware of if you're thinking of changing things and seeing exactly how they work. For me personally, out of the box, uh, the device comes with Samsung messages. Not that it's a bad application, but for me, I like to use Google messages because it supports RCS. So for me, the, the ability of using and then customizing that experience, it becomes something very easy for me to do install the application and then jump into the actual option here and then I'm able to customize the experience. Now, it's not present here because I don't have an option here, but if I jump in there, you'll notice I have multiple options as I've already installed a lot of my applications in there. And also this will be the place if you decide to install a secondary launcher, it does not automatically make it as a default. You have to go in there and then actually select this option. Once you select it, it changes the home screen and then you'll notice right there, this becomes my home screen, which is what I'm using with Nova Prime. Uh, again, very customizable, very easy to do, and very easy to switch between. 
But again, you need to know where they are. So it's under the application settings. Now that we've talked about that, let's go ahead and talk about the wallpapers that you guys are seeing on my device. So here it is. So let's go ahead and turn off the display. We'll turn them back on. Uh, these are Dragon Ball, obviously Dragon Ball themed uh, wallpapers. This is a video that's running directly on my wallpaper. So essentially is I can just basically push my finger here and of course push it there and it unlocks and it takes me home. And the also the wallpaper that you're seeing there is also very unique. Uh, the application that I like to use is called Ultrapix, and that's not the app that you that I use to get these wallpapers. I'll explain the, what, how I got these. Um, Ultrapix is very nice as far as an app that allows us to download customizable wallpapers that are made specifically for our devices. So an example here, this is my S21, my S21 Ultra, and these actually are customized to work directly with our devices. I know it says S21, but it, for the most part, the cutout is pretty much the same. So if I jump in here, it'll download the, this live wallpaper. You can see right there, it's a very nice uh, Goku trying to bring in a spirit bomb or building up a spirit bomb in there. Uh, we have Spidey, of course, Spider-Man. Let's go and bring this guy down. And it's going to show basically Spider-Man coming down from this. It's, it's really, really nice, very unique. So you have static images that you're able to download here. There are different themes, all of them. And again, the main benefit here is that they're all customized to work with the cutout of the camera. So initially, in a way, you're kind of hiding the camera, but in another way, you're customizing your device. It's very nice. So the app is called Ultrapix, and that's what I've been using to use this live wallpaper in the back. It's very nice and it works great. As far as the actual DB Legends uh, wallpaper that I have here, and this is actually pretty simple. I did a separate video on how I was able to do this, but the short answer of it, is, this is a screen recording of a character, uh, basically the character page in DB Legends. So if you play the game, you know exactly what we're talking about. You're able to do a screen recording, and then from there, using the gallery app, just align it and actually assign it as your wallpaper for your lock screen. Very simple, very easy. Of course, gets you done every single time. Now let's start talking about some advanced options that I really like about this, and that's gonna be the application called GoodLock. Now, GoodLock as an app is not by default installed on our Samsung devices. It's actually not available in the Google Play Store. You actually have to download it directly from the, Google, from the uh, Samsung Galaxy App Store. So the application itself is called GoodLock. If it's available in your market, and I say this because it seems to be more of a regional kind of a, an app, if it's available in your market, it'll be easy to download directly from the Galaxy App Store. If it's not, there are other options where you're able to kind of search for the application. But the simple way to uh, look at it is there is another app on the market called NiceLock on the Google Play Store that mimics what GoodLock does. But the main benefit here, if you want to go straight with the original one, just download the word GoodLock. What I like about this is the fact that it enables us to actually have very specific features that enables us to customize our device. So we have lock start, the ability of customizing our lock screen. Quick start here, customizing special quick panel here. That's the panel at the top. You're able to customize that. Clock face. Multi-star seems that it actually hasn't been uh, upgraded to support yet, so we're starting to see some more. Also, task changer, that was a big one that, that I had with, uh, with Android 10.0. Doesn't seem to be working yet on, and on Android uh, 11 yet. Navstar, Star are actually very nice. And then, of course, we have the options here to see what we can actually do. And you'll notice, first and foremost, it's fantastic. That's because the S21 supports an S Pen. And we'll talk about a little bit about that in a second. But overall, you're able to customize the keyboard on the key, uh, Samsung keyboard. Fantastic to customize the pen experience. Wonderland to be able to create custom themes directly from a wallpaper. So let's say you have a really cool wallpaper, but you want to create a theme around it. Basically make the colors in the system uh, icon and everything else work the exact same way. Theme Park will help you there. And Wonderland helps you create more of a wallpaper and uh, basically uh, a live wallpaper for you to use on your system. Uh, nice catch will actually uh, aggregate all of your notifications and if you miss something you can go back and see which ones they are one-handed operation is one of my favorite options here and i say this because this is the only reason i'm able to do things like this also the only reason i can bring in some of those options the ability of going back this way the very very nice and of course i can also do task switcher which is very very nice it's a one-handed operation mode that enables us to use the sides of our smartphone to initiate gestures not just on the bottom so my Swipe up to go home, swipe up and then go back are present in the same form. So I can do this to go back, this to go to the recent app. And of course here, I can actually uh, do that if I'm actually able to use it and customize it the way I want. So One-Handed Operations Plus is available on both the Google Play Store as well as the App Store, uh, or not the App Store, but the uh, Galaxy Store. Um, Edge Touch and Sound Assistant are very nice and Sound Assistant helps us to actually get some nice customizations. And those are the nice options that you get there. So you notice by default, this is the Samsung no normal notification or audio notification. Sound Assistant allows me not only to turn it on, I'm also able to jump in to turn on the equalizer. I'm also able to go in there and change the equalizer all without having to go into sound settings. So good luck by far is one of the most customizing options that we can get on a Samsung device to date. 
Uh, one of the best benefit here you can also see is it actually has a nice little customization for my pen. And as I mentioned, this actually supports an S Pen where this one does not. So the display on the S21 Ultra is very similar to the Note 20 Ultra, although, although we don't actually have a pen inside. So I'm using the Tab S7 Plus S Pen. It will work with a standard S Pen. The only problem that we have here is it does not charge the S Pen. So you do need to have that special case that Samsung is selling for about 70 bucks that includes a charging capability for its own S Pen. Right now, this one for me sits with the Tab S7 Plus and whenever I need it, I'm actually able to access it. And of course, we got all the options that we have in here, uh, all the standard options that we have, we just don't have Bluetooth functionality, meaning I actually cannot initiate things by just pressing it. Um, I can actually select them, use them, uh, do whatever I want. So let's say here I can actually do, so you'll notice right there, here's the overhead camera. I'm gonna take a picture and then I'm just gonna draw over it. Uh, not that I wanna do that, but you know what I mean. Essentially, very easy, very simple. And you can customize that. And of course, get your own custom image here. You can see here, once it gets close enough to the screen, uh, that you can customize. And that's just my normal video logo that you're seeing right there at the top right. The next thing we're gonna talk about is the new settings that we have within the caller or that uh, the phone application. And what I mean by that is essentially it's called call background. So that's the new option that we get in here. You're able to customize how the caller or the caller ID information is shown up. Uh, there's two options that you can do. So there's a layout, you can customize it by just being a main screen or uh, using it as more of a kind of a bullet style here. You can change that of course to, to your preference. It comes by default like this and you can actually change the background to it, which makes it a little bit more unique. So as opposed to just getting the standard uh, wallpaper like this, which is typical to what we see, uh, we actually have the ability to, like, I can go back there, I can go to video, and then it creates this option, which I felt like worked the best for me. So that's why we're seeing as a preview. So that's a nice little option that's present only in the dialer. And again, you have the ability of customizing that, go into your dialer and then go into the three buttons at the top and then go to settings and it's under call background. Very nice and very simple. The thing about the cameras this time in the Galaxy S21 line of devices is that we have some new modes in here that enables us to use the cameras in multiple ways. And what I mean by that is this new feature called director mode. So director view, I guess. Director view enables us to actually use our device in a specific manner. Now, we have the ability of recording 4K 60 frames per second on the front as well as on the back due to the power of the Snapdragon 888. But in the director view option, you're able to actually see a different experience. And I'm gonna walk you through guys, take you guys outside real quick. We actually have a new video mode that's built into the S21 Ultra with at least one UI options. And that's called director view. Now that's the ability of me using actually all of the cameras in a specific manner. So first and foremost, we're using the front facing camera and the back facing camera, we're recording the video. But we can see here also on the display, I'm actually able to see a preview of what the camera on the back is doing. So here, jumping into the telephoto, jumping into the standard focal length, and of course, jumping into the ultra wide lens now keep in mind that the previews that we're looking at here on the bottom right are not actually previews from the camera so it's not a live feed it's actually a crop from the wide angle lens and of course when you switch over to it it actually takes you into that actual lens and it makes things working perfectly uh, we're also able to play a little bit with the placement of the front facing camera as you can see here we have different modes and the ability of just switching it over and being again either off or on uh, everything stays the same. So the experiences that we're getting here that will depend on which version of the S21 that you're gonna pick up. If you're going to the S21, S21 Plus, just know that it's going to be a 1080p resolution and of course 120 hertz refresh rate adaptive from 40 all the way to 120. If you go to the S21 Ultra, you have the ability of going to QHD or WQHD, which is meaning 2K at 120 hertz with that adaptive option. It's not an always on, which means on the S21 Ultra, it can be dropped all the way as 10 frames per second, all the way up to 120. In the goal here is to help us play, save battery so that we're not consistently running at a refresh rate that isn't needed. If we're reading an email or just statically looking at an email, you don't need the display to run at that refresh rate. Um, Otherwise, uh, the experiences that I shared with you guys for the most part, with the exception of the S Pen, are pretty much the same. Hopefully, Task Changer and some of the other modules from Good Luck in the original, the, the Good Luck 3.0, will come over. Uh, my only thing I would probably say is this is an Android 11 and they just didn't port over the application. Uh, so that's one thing to keep that in mind. But other than that, um, if you have any other questions or any impressions of, the, of these devices, please let me know in the comments below. Hope you guys like this video. Like and subscribe as usual. And of course, I'll see you guys in the next one.